Play Bars. All my life I've been told that if you want off-road performance, you need to take your sway bar off. Sway bar disconnects on almost every vehicle. But I'm here to tell you, as you start going faster and you start racing, you might want a sway bar. Today on Rock Rod's Tech Tip videos, we're going to talk about why you may or may not want a sway bar, how to install them, and the process that goes into all that, and some of the theory behind it. Stay tuned. So what does a sway bar do? A sway bar goes from either the axle to the chassis or the chassis to the axle via a bar that's designed to twist and some arms and some links. And what that does is it keeps the chassis and the axle relative to each other or parallel. Now, when you disconnect a sway bar, it allows the suspension to move very freely. But when you start going faster, you run into scenarios where you might want to stop that, especially in cornering. That's why a lot of on-road vehicles have sway bars. People pop them to go off-road, but whenever you get into the off-road racing industry, you might want something that's somewhere in between. So then you can get one of these. This is an off-road sway bar. It's made specifically so that you can change via these holes the way the sway bar operates and the amount of leverage on the axle. So now that we went through some of that stuff, we're going to talk about specifics as to why you might want a sway bar and how to tune a suspension so that the sway bar is perfect for your scenario. All right, the next thing that we're going to talk about is why. Why you might want a sway bar in one of these off-road rigs. If you look at the diagram that I've drawn behind here, it's pretty simple, but it shows something that I want to talk about. As you start going over some of the whoops and you have a suspension that doesn't have a lot of rebound in it or you know it's got a high rebound depending on how you look at it, it's going to carry the tire from the face of one whoop to the face of the other whoop which is going to start packing the suspension. You want that tire to conform to that roll just like this other one where the tire comes up and goes back down. But as you get to the point where you release the amount of rebound in your shock to contour to the obstacles, you're going to start picking up body roll. As you start doing that, your tires are going to stay in contact, but as you go into a corner, you're going to start body roll. So, in the past year or so, we've done a lot of tuning on Travis's suspension. Now, he's having some issues, so Travis, tell us a little bit about some of the issues that you're having and some of the things we plan on doing to fix it. Hey, you guys, look here. Uh, with my green grass opera kill shot, we can have some issues with it, with it body rolling. And uh, we want to get it to control it so I can be more competitive and cut seconds off on my race time. Um, right now, when I'm giving it gas and turns, it wants to body roll. It kind of lays over a little bit, and it will cause me to flip if I don't burp the gas out a little bit. Uh, if I'm going up a bounty hill, and I back up, and I'm fixing to launch it, it has a tendency to squat to the right and lean over and shoot to the right, which is offline where I need to be at. And then when we're having a, like a speed course with a bunch of boulders, it'll bounce around and kick left to right and throw me off course. Um, so what we want to do is control that. And the way to control that is with a sway bar. We've done everything we can possibly do to these shocks, valve and spring, rebound, and now we're at the point that we're fixing to install a sway bar. And uh, hopefully that will give me the cutting edge what I need to cut seconds off for those guys who are coming after me. A really good option for mounting a sway bar on a chassis that's already been finished are these clamps. You can get these from BerkeyRacing.com and they mount in with six bolts and they clamp onto a bar. You can mount your tubing directly to it for the sway bar. That way you don't have to go in and cut all your powder coating up. All right, so now we've got the sway bar installed. We leveled everything out. We've moved the suspension up and down a couple times and everything looks to clear really well. So we're gonna go ahead and tack everything together. You just want to do a little tack on each side, then pull everything apart to do your final welding so you don't weld up the bushings and melt them. Okay, so don't be afraid to take this rod that comes with the kit and cut it down. As you can see, our rod's going to be way too long to be able to put in this spot, so we're actually going to have to take this rod and cut it down a little bit. What we did was we jacked the vehicle up until it was all the way at its suspension droop. We took a measurement there, put the sway bar where it needed to be, then we compressed it all the way, did the same thing, and now that it's at ride height, this is where the sway bar needs to sit. These brackets right here are notorious for bending. When you get this put into here and bolted down, and all that stress from the axle trying to twist and the chassis uh, side by side, it'll actually take this bracket and bend it over, so make sure you put a little strut or something in there to keep it nice and solid. In this case, we're gonna weld the bottom down here, and then we're gonna weld the top on the axle truss to keep it from bending over.
it's normal to have to modify these links when you do it. Be smart. Put a nut on first. Make your cut to whatever length you need. Take your grinder, smooth it out. Then whenever you back the nut up, it'll actually true the threads on the way out. All right, so we just got the sway bar installed and we got everything ready to go. Travis took it for a couple laps around the track that we got here around the shop. Travis, tell us a little bit about what you got going on. I can tell you right now, this right here is going to be a top secret weapon here coming out because I just got out there doing some donuts and hit a couple jumps. She didn't do any body rolling. She didn't do any slinking. She was steady hooking and going. So I got to say, what we just did is an A-plus in bringing my A-game out a little bit better. I think that uh, it's going to be a huge advantage for Travis in the future, especially when he starts to pick up a bunch of speed. Make sure you guys like Jake Berkey Riot Buggy. Check out the Hitman and uh, like Busted Knuckle Films. We'll see you guys.